Is gluten a brain and nerve toxin? It absolutely is. We know that gluten causes leaky gut first, right? So this is number one. This leaky gut leads to chemicals like LPS. It leads to the production of antibodies. It leads to an inflammatory response. And all of these things we are certain of can cause blood-brain barrier damage leading to leaky brain. And that in and of itself can manifest right, as neurological disease. And so what do we do? What do you do about it, right? We have to stop this cascade of events from happening. So what we have to do is we got to recognize that gluten might be playing a role. Now, that's not to say that all nerve diseases are only caused by gluten. I want to be clear about that, too. There certainly are other factors at play here. But if you've got any one of those conditions and your doctor has not done this, this is very important. You ask for this. HLA-DQ genotyping. Now, it's important that you ask for the right kind of HLA-DQ genotyping. So if you're going to one of these like genetic testing mills online, what they don't do, they, they run a SNP test. They run what's called a SNP where they're looking for what are called 2s and 8s. And the reason they're looking for HLA-DQ 2s and 8s is because their association with celiac disease. Unfortunately, people with 2s and 8s don't oftentimes manifest their gluten exposure as neurological damage. The, the ones that we're concerned with are the ones with HLA-DQ1 and 3. So nerve damage, gluten-induced nerve damage. So if you've gone and done one of those online tests and they told you you were fine, you didn't have predisposing HLA-DQ markers to celiac, it's very possible you could have the non-celiac gluten-sensitive genetic markers that none of them test for. So very, very important that you ask for the right test when you do this. So um, if you ask your doctor and they don't know what, what you're talking about, go visit Gluten-Free Society. There's a genetic testing service that they offer and you can get this type of thing measured. But you'll want to get it measured because if it's the case, that will be your justification for getting gluten out of your diet. The quicker you do that, the quicker you stop this cascade from occurring, the quicker you stop that from happening. Again, the faster you can let your, if your nerves are being damaged by gluten, the faster you're gonna heal. So it's important to catch this super early because if you don't, um, again, that damage going on for a long time equally takes a long time for it to come back and heal. Now, many of you are probably saying, Dr. Osborne, what are you crazy? I, you know, gluten doesn't cause, ner cause nerve damage, it's only celiac, right? So. What I've done, I'm showing you a few different research studies here. This was a great review uh, that was published in the Journal of Headache and Pain. And so here's what they found. Migraine has been associated with celiac disease and the condition should be searched particularly in patients with migraine that also have occipital and parieto occipital calcification on brain neuroimaging. In those patients, gluten-free diet can also be effective in reducing migraine frequency. It's been proposed that migraine may be improved by dietary approaches with beneficial effects on gut bacteria. Remember the gut-brain axis we were talking about and gut-brain axis, including appropriate consumption of fiber um, as well as low glycemic diets. Remember sugar damages nerves, so it's not just gluten. And supplementation with vitamin D, very important. Vitamin D is very beneficial and very helpful. Um, in neurological function, as well as omega-3 and potentially probiotics. So in this comprehensive review, linking gluten to migraine headaches, which again, neurological in nature. In this study published in the Journal of Neurology, so, so notice this is two studies. This was published in, 19, in, in uh, 2018. And um, this is not, you know, this is not Men's Health Magazine, folks. This is the Journal of Neurology, one of the most peer-reviewed and most uh, prolific journals as it relates to neurology. This is, too, Journal of Neurology published in this year, right, 2021. So you can see here, gluten neuropathy, prevalence of neuropathic pain and the role of the gluten-free diet. The summary here is this in this study. Strict gluten-free diet was associated with lowering the odds of peripheral neuropathy pain by 88.7% almost 90% reduction in peripheral neuropathic pain. So if you're struggling with neurological pain and you don't know why, again, you're pumping, your doctor's pumping you full of medicines, nobody's asked this question about gluten, 
you know, proof is in the pudding, folks. You want to get this investigated as quickly as possible. So conclusion here, neuropathic pain is very prevalent in gluten neuropathy. That's what GN stands for and is associated with poor mental health status, right? Because when you hurt all the time, when your nerves are in pain all the time, you don't think clearly. You get really frustrated and depressed. A strict gluten-free diet might be productive as it's associated with a significant reduction of the odds of peripheral neuropathic pain associated to gluten neuropathy. So major study done, another major study done, gluten neuropathy, and this one was on HLA associations. I mentioned this a minute ago. This is genetic associations. What they found is that people that tended to have gluten-induced neuropathy had a gene pattern that was not your typical celiac gene pattern. So important, again, if you're going to do genetic testing, that you order the right test, lest you get this false negative thought process in your brain where your doctor says, oh, you don't have celiac genes, you don't have to worry about it. These folks, these are not the traditional celiac genes that are being tested here. These are, again, non-celiac gluten-sensitive genes associated with the development of neurological manifestation. So you see the conclusion here, gluten neuropathy is a late manifestation of gluten sensitivity. In celiac disease, the majority of patients have the length-dependent neuropathy with a linear deterioration over time. HLA genotyping of gluten sensitivity in celiac patients who suffer from neuropathic symptoms is recommended as it can help in ide identifying patients at risk for developing sensory ganglionopathy, which is a, you know, a form of neuropathy. So, you know, the research across the board, and I could, I could talk all night, folks, about the research. I could have pulled up another 150 studies for you, but I just didn't want to bore you to death with academia. But I want you to understand that the research on this is very, very strong and has been around for quite a long time. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.